Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This week, I am very excited. In fact, I feel almost nervous about talking to this particular afterlife guest. We will be having conversation with Nelson Mandela. So let's feel into this vibration. To me, there's such a profound, peaceful, strength, energy, and integrity that comes through with the vibration of Mr. Mandela. And because of that, it is my sincere and deepest honor to be able to bridge to him through the afterlife. Oh my, this kind of energy that comes through my friends is just like, it's almost like, It's as though we are so deeply connected to a loving, profound, loving, unconditional, loving, vibrational energy, a wisdom of, of something that is so greater than us. That's how it feels when I connect in. <sighs> okay. A little bit nervous because I feel like there's so much greatness. There's so much that we can mine from your wisdom and your insight, Nelson Mandela. I'm not even sure what to call you. I feel like I should call you Mr. Mandela. He says, you can call me Nelson. Or I mean, what, I mean, you have titles and you have all sorts of things that I could you know, honor you with as far as a human perspective, but I recognize that that's not what your spirit, how your spirit flows. You feel like such a beautiful energy of grace and when I first connect with you, I see a big white bird, a beautiful white bird, like a dove. And it's bringing this peace, you know, the dove with the olive branch is kind of how I see it. And that's a perfect way to open our conversation today, Nelson. Please, please begin by sharing with us the energy of the, some of the wisdom that you have to offer here today recognizing that it is not all-encompassing, but yet simply a drop in the bucket that you have to offer of what you really have to offer from the afterlife perspective. Please grace us with your wisdom. The first question that I would ask is about helping us as humanity to be better people. How can you, what can you provide to us energetically in this context to help us to be contributors in our, in our lives as neighbors, as community members, as citizens, as human kind as a whole, the global stage, there's so much and I simply ask you, how can we be better people at this time? And he says, well, you know, I'd like that tea right about now. I think I will have some tea. <laughs> I asked him before we got ready <laughs> to do the session. I said, I feel like I should give you something or honor you in some way. And, you know, would you like some tea? And he says, oh, no, I'm, I'm quite fine. I'm quite fine. You know, it doesn't, they don't need that. It's a spirit thing, right? And yet I made some for myself. He says, I think I'll have that tea now. Okay, so metaphysically, there you go. I'll have some for myself. And I'm realizing that was intentional. That was intentional. My beautiful coffee mug with lipstick on it <laughs> says this. There's tea in here. So he was giving me a little nudge. More self-love. Is this the beginning of the bridge of the message? Indeed it is. And isn't that wise, he says. Isn't that wise? Wouldn't that be a wise place to begin? Within oneself. Indeed. Okay, I'm going to try to hold the energy and just speak with the most closely matched words that he oh, I just want to cry you guys overwhelming 
positive love energy love like love just love such a gift thank you nelson i invite the viewers to feel this as well it begins indeed you know you know this inside of you but what happens he says what happens when all of you when many of you when a few of you at first come together around an idea around something that draws attracts you in to a meaning and that meaning you would conceive of is a sense of purpose and that purpose brings you together it unites you as one and that is where the goodness is born it is born into life there now i admit in my life i had many struggles i was not a perfect man i am not an example of a perfect human being I made some choices and was involved in some things that were not to the best of ways. In the state of mind, in the state of becoming pure in your purpose, ignited by the power of a deeper meaning. Sometimes, you are distracted by things that seem to promise you getting there faster. You can accomplish your goal by any means necessary. At times, you choose these ways and over the long term of your lifetime, you will hold regret about those choices. Now, this is a natural way. This is how you grow and experience human life. But yet, even in those moments when you are attracted to getting there quicker, to accomplishing the goal, set forward before you one task at a time, never lose sight, never, never forget who you are on the inside because it is that person you will have to live with that voice that brings forward images that you cannot wipe away you will not forget the results of your quick swift actions Ugh. I'm feeling the contrast, Nelson, as you're speaking. We're talking with Nelson Mandela. Can you believe it? <laughs> the afterlife. <laughs> I am feeling the contrast that you're showing in yourself as an example, that you are not perfect, that human beings are not perfect. We are not perfect. We make decisions and choices, and sometimes we focus on the right now in a way that gets us to something that we feel like we need. Yet, I also feel you talking about a, a, a bigger vision, which I guess our life purpose or our, our mission in our life connects to. Hold a broader vision. Indeed, that might be something you could connect with the viewers might understand he's referring also um, before I uh, turned on the the video to record I took a few minutes in my notebook just to write down some things questions and things that concepts and philosophies and 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 areas that I'd love to hear insight from from you and he's referring to that so uh, I will ask you the question that I, I was curious about. When it comes to stand, taking a stand for something or championing a cause, I'm not, I'm not going to value or put different causes, different, different taking a stand 
for different things, issues, topics, whether it's current events, social justice, whether it's humans, humanity related. We cannot, we cannot put values on this one's better than this one, this one's more important than this one. We simply can't do that because there's so many different dynamics. I recognize that as Bridget, as a person, too many different dynamics. But I do recognize that when we champion a cause or get behind a cause, we can lose ourselves. We get swallowed up in the momentum. It's almost like a, oh, I dare use this word mob mentality, where we just get behind, like blindly follow, you know, and I would like for you to talk about that, to speak to this, because it is important that we organize and that we come together, whether it be online, on the internet, and heartfelt unity, because it's easy to come together and be anonymous and, and make claims and even publicly, it's easy to lie about things that are not truthful. We see that on the grand stage with leaders. Regardless of your party, political party affiliation or the country in which you live, there's not facts, which would be considered lies. <laughs> not just untruthing, but lies. How, Nelson, what, how do we get behind a cause, how do we, how do we distinguish for ourselves the difference between ourselves and then at the same time the need to be part of the, the community connected into the momentum of a cause that are, are very well intended and important. That's a natural part of us to organize, to organize. Can you talk about these things? There's so many things here. Can you talk about these things for us? He says, organized. He says, organization was not my strong suit, despite what you may think. That is not true. He said, that would be an untruth for me. But the meeting of people, the meeting a person, he says, meeting a man face to face, looking in their eyes, you can see, you clearly see. You see yourself reflected upon them. And sometimes you like what you see and that brings you together or you don't like what you see and that pushes you away because you don't want to be reminded of the things you don't want to see in yourself every single day. So when you organize, when you are drawn into together, to work together, to, to create a group or an organization. You unite beyond what is external, what you see on the outside. It's not just organizing and joining, joining a cause, signing up for the cause. It is a part of you that you are seeking in the connection to whatever it is that you feel as though you believe in but it is not the, don't make no mistake, it is not the belief that creates the need to join, to be part of something. That comes from the spirit. In deep in the soul, we need one another's. And he says light, that source of energy, we need that reminder of who we really are what we are capable of. And when you join something, a group, a cause, a, be, you become active, activated into that being. Then you know, you know it makes you feel like you are not alone as a spirit. The light within you is, is united with other lights and that creates a bigger energy inside you. It makes you feel more purposeful. It makes you have more meaning in whatever it is you're doing in your day-to-day -day life. There is more fuel inside of you. And so when you come together, whether it's a small group of a few, and whether you're studying, and, or he says studying prophecy is what he's saying to me. He's like, I'm like, oh, I don't really have any small groups that I do that with necessarily, but when you come and you study, are you trying to predict the future or are you trying to create it? 
So when you join this organization, when you are called into service in a cause and your light unites with the light of the many, I will caution you in this to always remember the reason, the reasoning, not the rationale, not the rationalization, but the, the understanding, the depth of which you are connected. And it is important to recognize where you begin and where the cause begins, or perhaps where the boundaries are for you. And that is very important. He says sacred boundaries. That's when you can move beyond the self-love and into more of an external devotion to a group, a cause, well-meaning, well-intended. Yes, indeed, you're caring and the capacity for you to, to be compassionate and to serve is honorable, even noble, perhaps. So then why is it that you are doing it? Is it for that acceptance and recognition of identity within yourself? Or is it that yours to claim? Without independence or separation from anything, you can remain and be part of a group, but understand the power of your individualism. You can be active, activated and activist, But do not put the emphasis outside of you when you are doing all of these things, when you are doing the things, when you are in the action of the flow of those momentums. You must always remember, be in check. Within what is and what is not you. And only you can answer that. Only you can know that. It's, it's, he says, it's, a, it's enchanting to follow a set decree or to unite with such fierceness, with such energy of emotion. And generally, it's, it's the stronger emotion, the anger, the victimhood, the, the fight. And over time you will see, I would hope that you will see, that it is through the peaceful making of things that sustains long-term change. And that is indeed what you want to be part of, is change. Wow, it's like on cue, because that's another question I had about <laughs> something. Wow, let's just take a minute, everyone. Nelson Mandela providing so much rich information lots of heart energy there's throat chakra activated the throat is activated with communication helping to clear some of the the mystery around causes and and our our roles as individuals in groups and organizations and such again i want to be clear this isn't a yes or no or this group that group that's not that's not about that it's a it's simply about the insight from the afterlife about this concept because i've in spiritual context it can mean a lot of different things there's a natural need for us to communicate and connect with other people and to feel like we know them and see them in ourselves and the good stuff within ourselves we want that reflected back but it's easy to just let that be the identity of ourselves instead of recognizing the things that we have more facets than just that one identity. It gets comfortable letting someone else lead the way for your life instead of you leading the way internally for your life. You can still participate, engage, and be part of things. Of course, I love that. I'm such a, woo, I'm all about that, <laughs> right? Supporting the community, getting involved, all of that. But it's really an important alignment piece that we have to... Uh, I, that's beautiful, honoring. Thank you. I can't wait to watch that back because I can just feel it. Uh, I need to listen. Beautiful. Thank you. So now the next question is about change. So I'm going to share with you something that came up with for me this morning in my meditation. 
actually think it was yesterday's meditation, but it's been on my mind. And, and uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela, I would love to ask you about this. I think other people will be able to definitely relate to this. But so in my meditation that I was having a dialogue with myself, with my spirit, connecting with myself as a guide, really hearing my own voice and what it is that I desire and just getting, getting into a place where I could allow a stillness to have some, some clarity on that. I just wanted to connect with myself at the deepest level, so I did. And in doing that, one of the things that was, uh, one of the messages that came forward was change maker. And I think I've heard the word before, those words put together, be a change maker. And I, I wonder what your perspective from the afterlife your insight would be about this concept of being a change maker. What, what is that? What does that really mean for us as people? And what does it mean for our spirit? He says, that depends on what you believe. That all depends on what you believe. Do you believe? One person can change the world? Do you believe one person can change things? And is the world too big for you to change? Is that really what the issue is here? This is not about, this is not a question about navigating through change. Okay. What is the change you wish to create? Why is it so important to you now? Is there a purpose? What is it? This is not a title. I'm very aware of that. The concept of change maker isn't a title. It's not a, an assignment either. It's not a divine assignment. I know that, I feel that. It's not something like, oh, look at me, I'm this, you know? It's not, I didn't feel any of that. I felt like it was almost like an artist, like everything just felt really open and expansive when I connected into this energy. Change maker, what is that? What does that really mean? It means that nothing is stagnant. Everything is moving. It's really about the energy, Bridget. It's about the energy of what you bring, what you bring to the table, to the negotiation, what you bring to the organization, what you bring into your life and your relationships. That's what it's about, the energy. And you assume positive intention, wherein we have seen example, which you have referred to, of negative intention, self absorbed attention is what the word Bridget will use self absorbed attention he says attention on self and it's not about not having a personal gain in the changing of things everything is about a personal gain because your spirit is craving that you are seeking seeking that the personal gain is always always about connection needing to be recognized visible, seen, heard, not ignored. This is where the value statement of your life comes in. The worthiness, the worth of a person, the valuing of a person or of a people's, of a humanity, without the filtering that naturally occurs in the human context. This is about energy. That is indeed what you are connecting to. The change maker terminology you're referring to is about energy and it's the artistry in which you so exquisitely express that. So beautifully contribute to the world. So you all in are, you all are, you all have choice in that and how you will be, how will you be? Just take a minute to let that kind of 
Oh, Nelson Mandela, my goodness, wow. This is totally a selfish thing. I really wanted to talk to you. <laughs> Feel the energy, just, you know, I just felt so, oh. Can you leave us with some parting wisdom? Give us a few pieces of, of hope. What, what would you gift us with in this, this conversation here today? Hope, he says hope. You said it. He says, have a cup of that. Wouldn't that be lovely? Yes. He says, I would say it's not easy. Life does not happen without struggle. There is always inevitably discomfort. Don't let that be a sign to deter you or distract you from what you know is true what you deeply, most deeply connect with. Pay attention to those connections, those wantings that you hold. They give you great insight, great, great insight. Not just for yourself, but then in the reflection of you and others as well, as well. We would be better served as spirit while we are living in a body, while we are inhabiting a body, to recognize the true power of the simple, simple emotions that are often disregarded because they are quiet, such as empathy, compassion, kindness, and peace. Peace. Peaceful knowing. These are the gifts, the imparting wisdom I would like to share with you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Just wonderful. Just, I would love to speak with you again. And just so, just even just to connect with the energy of you and even in a meditation and just so beautiful. And, and I'm sure from what you shared early on in this video, um, that was definitely an afterlife, later in life, an afterlife experience. Because when you were younger, I definitely saw the contrast of the being restless and needing to get things done and how can we do this and let's just do this kind of a thing. And the, and the impatience of things and, and, and things that happen to us, the things that we do as human beings as well. Thank you so much for the energy today. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you all have been able to feel the energy vibration of Nelson Mandela visiting with us from the afterlife. What a wonderful guest. Thank you so much for being here, for sharing this experience with me here at Above Life Channel. The purpose is definitely to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, because this here right now, my friends, this is your life. This is your life, so take in some of this wisdom. Apply it and live it. Just live it. Thank you for watching.